If you never listen Hold the tea, stubborn nigga, so I social distance Gotta watch for the clock, make sure the hand is ticking Give them birth through drought time, make it turn to pigeons Everybody hurting, but this pain is different We spit with precision For the ones that can see the mist The Easter kid pains with priests and singing I hope they see the vision Get too deep, sometimes I lose attention Yeah, we waiting on everybody to get in here, y'all So we go ahead and run that intro one more well Countdown one more time. I say go, gas me up. Scrabbling like a baby, they stole something. Go wonder how you pay attention if you never listen. Or the tea, stubborn nigga, so I social distance. Gotta watch for the clock, make sure the hand is ticking. Give them birth through drought time, make it turn to pigeons. Everybody hurting, but this pain is different. We spit with precision for the ones that can see the mist. The Easter kid pains with priests and singing. I hope they see the vision. Get too deep, sometimes I lose attention. Jay. I'm gonna do it one more time. I know y'all hate me for this shit. I'm gonna do it one more time. One more time, y'all. I'm gonna wait for you. one more time. I ain't even gonna explain. I say go. Yes, we all. Like a baby, they stole something. Go wonder how you pay attention if you never listen. Or the tea, stubborn niggas, so I social distance. Gotta watch for the clock, make sure the hand is ticking. Give them birth through drought time, make it turn to pigeons. Everybody hurting, but this pain is different. We spit with precision for the ones that can see the mist. The Easter kid pains with priests and singing. I hope they see the vision. Get too deep, sometimes I lose attention. Welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk with J. Verse Jordan. Don't let me hold y'all, man. Go ahead and cue that intro. Let's get it. screen right now so i'm gonna go ahead and slide him to the side right now look we said we were gonna cover this we talked about it last night and um i actually i think this is more informative for people because i don't think a lot of people watch this type of stuff like i don't know if people watch reality tv as much i know the girls do but uh i don't think people came into watching this and it's basically to break down like y'all see the question up top y'all see what it's titled do women need men for survival and I asked that question because, you know, we got a lot of girls out here to say, uh, I don't need no man. I'm strong, independent, all that shit. By all means, props and kudos to you for doing that, but, um, like, or feeling that type of way. But when the shit hits the fan, we got to talk about that. 
Because when she hits the fan, that's when it shit gets popping. No job is back in here with me now. He was done, uh, you know, playing with himself. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> that, that's how we're doing it. Holy crap. That's how we oh, got to do it, man. So I'm going to go ahead and let you oh, introduce man. yourself, and then uh, we'll get it popping. Oh, man. You know who it is. It's the one no jive. I mean, let's talk with JJ. Man, don't we have an interesting condition for him tonight? Like, uh, do men need, uh, do, do women need men to, for survival? Come on. That's a great question. We would like y'all to answer this in the comment section below. Uh, just let us know. Um, Shit, I, I, are you ready to queue him up? We good on the video? Oh, yeah, we're going to queue him up. And y'all check the uh, description box. I actually got No Jobs channel link down there. And also, the person whose channel we're covering today, Think Before You Sleep. Y'all probably have never heard of that channel. Go check him out. He does great work. He's going to talk throughout this so you can kind of get a gist of his, uh, his demeanor, his mindset about this stuff. But uh, he did this video, and we're just going to react to it. So uh, let me go ahead and drop us down here to the bottom. And uh, let's see what we got real quick. And uh, we're going to jump in. Hey, Jive, just let me know when you want to say something because uh, it's going to be fast-paced. So let's get it. Right. Two uninhabited Pacific islands. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. Will it be brute power or mental strength? The wins a day. Fine. One, two, three, go. Oh, boy. Get in there, boys! Woo! Actually wrapping up a dinosaur. We just caught a prehistoric animal. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Uh, I think evidence begs to differ on that one. Sure, it's one thing to say that in a nice air-conditioned office, but I don't think I have ever heard a feminist point out the inconvenient truth that men almost exclusively work all the dangerous and important jobs that keep society running. I Does anybody disagree with what that man just said? Because... It's not to hype up men because I'm a man, you know, hey, hype to the men. Men work the most dangerous jobs in the entire world. And it's not by like a small majority. It's like 92 to fucking 8%. 92%, 8%. And that's me giving something. Because honestly, I think a lot of these jobs are like 98%. Do you disagree with that, no job? I can't, I can't disagree. We definitely uh, do some of the most hard job just based on the, the condition of sex alone. Being a male, you're you're put into some grimy places, man. I can think of a few right now. Well, we got we got one that we did for a while, you know, in the military, man. If people look at like and I know a lot of people say there yeah, there are women in the military. If y'all look at the numbers for who's enrolled in the military, you'll see how fat like you'll see you'll come to the conclusion real quick that uh yeah, men in the majority of the military, they run that shit. And it's not even no 50, 49 or any of that bullshit. It's like 70, I ain't going to lie. It might be 80, 20. But uh, Indeed. Let's, let, let's let him keep talking. Let's see what he got. I can survive without a New York Times journalist, but I don't think I can survive without indoor plumbing, electricity, or a roof. <laughs> I find it curious, though, that feminists love to proclaim how independent they are from men on their computers and cell phones, that were invented by man, which brings up the question of equality. That was a topic of discussion in the Jubilee MRA video I covered recently, and I avoided it so I could talk about it in this video. Are men and women equal? The answer to that is no. The reason for that is that men and women- Hey, hey, hey. and I don't want nobody coming over here getting mad when we say this, because honestly, if you say equal, that means you have to be the same. And that's why I, I cover that shit about narcissism. Like when females call dudes narcissistic, let's break that word down. Let's see what the definition definition of it is. And then we can talk about it. So like when you break down equal, equal means being the same. Men and women are clearly not the same. 
So don't nobody get up on their high horses and run around here and tell me, I don't like that. That's disrespectful. Like, nah, that's, that's just what it is. And are two different things that you can't compare one-to-one on their actual value to society. Equal is the wrong word. The correct word is necessary. Food and water are not equal, but they are both necessary. Each serves its own role. The same is true for men and women. There are things that women are naturally better at, and there are things that men are naturally better at. When it comes to raising children, men are far better at setting boundaries. Women are better at emotional development. Taught to kids without fathers, they are often all over the place and can't contain their behaviors. Taught to kids without mothers, they are often emotionally dead. What we have seen with feminism... Bruh, I ain't even gonna bullshit. I I do want to tell y'all this, man. (laughs) I watched a young kid that was raised by a single mother today. Not my next door neighbor, but the neighbor next to my next door neighbor. This kid supposedly got in into a situation with his mom and the people that were at the house. It's a bunch of this dumb niggas doing dumb shit, drinking and smoking and whatever the hell. Ain't no good household to him for him to be raised in. But he got into an argument with one of the women over there. So it got to the point where he locked himself inside of the house today and said he was going to burn the house down. Bruh, burn the house down. Y'all think it stops right there. It gets even worse. He started fucking like spraying lighter fluid, like lighter fluid all over the house inside. And then he locked himself in there. So the next door neighbor, my neighbor, called the cops on. Cops get there. The mama talking shit about the kid. They finally get in the house, bro. They finally get in the goddamn house. They end up bringing the kid out here in handcuffs. Hands behind his back. In handcuffs. This kid is 14 years old, y'all. He decide he gonna run. <laughs> Bruh, he tried to strike out. And I'm talking about no running form at all. Tried to run with some big ass fucking shoes. I don't know where the fuck he got them shoes from. Maybe he got big feet. He tried to strike out and run. And then the cop, like, he ran into a field that had no exit, so he had to cut back and come to the street. And when he did that, the cop, and it was two black cops, and it's a black kid. The cop pushed him, pushed him while he was running with his hands behind his fucking back. He didn't try to grab him, and she couldn't grab him, but he pushed him. This motherfucker fell so bad on the concrete, and the first thing out of his mama mouth is, how you do my baby like that? That fucked up. You gonna push my baby down like that? You got your son to the point of getting into an argument with some lady at your house. That he goes in the house and starts spraying lighter fluid all over the house, talking about he gonna burn the house down. And then you have the, the police get called on your son. And the first thing you want to say is what the police did to him. How about the police turn around and tell you what the fuck you did to your son to have him act like this? Exactly. It it blows my motherfucking mind. So I agree with I agree with uh think before you sleep when he says what he's saying. I know I should. I went off on a tangent with that one. Uh, you got anything, no job, before I go and run this shit again? I, man, your stories be on point. <laughs> it's tough following them sometimes. Roll the tape. God damn it, man. Just talk shit about me. <laughs> no. Oh, it's man. an overpromotion of women, followed by a complete lack of respect for what men contribute. And well, I think this show is the perfect example of why feminists cannot survive in their fantasy world without men. For those of you who haven't heard, this is the wonderful experiment in gender equality called The Island with survival expert Bear Grylls. 14 average men versus 14 average women on two different Pacific islands for six weeks. Both groups have their clothes, two water canisters, and some other basic supplies like three machetes, eight fishing hooks, and a first aid kit. They all Now, hold on, hold on. We all heard the equipment, right? This is what the men and the women had. I'm going to have him say that one more time. This is what the men and the women had. This is what they had. So this is what they was working with. So ain't nobody going to say the men had an advantage. Feminists cannot survive in their fantasy world without men. For those of you who haven't heard, this is the wonderful experiment in gender equality called The Island with survival expert Bear Grylls. 14 average men versus 14 average women on two different Pacific islands for six weeks. Both groups have their clothes, two water canisters, and some other basic supplies like three machetes, eight fishing hooks, and a first aid kit. Clothes, two canisters for water, a couple tools to do. They got to do like a machete and shit like that and a first aid kit. 
That's what they had. Survive for fucking a month. That's all they had to do. Survive for a month. All right, let's keep going. They also had two days of survival training and were not supposed to do any other practice. Uh-oh, so who will uh-oh, be uh-oh, the hold superior? On, hold on, hold on. on top of that, gave them two days of survival training. So they ain't sent them in there blind. They gave them two days of survival training. We all got that right. All right, let's keep going. For your survival team, the men or the women. Obviously, both teams had it rough, but my experience watching the show was, yeah, men had it difficult, but they worked hard and pulled through. The women, however, was just a never-ending story of misery with one bad thing happening after another. They were clearly not able to survive without men, much to the anger of feminists who complained about this season. Let's get into the fun, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support is the best way to keep independent content creators independent from big tech, so your support is highly appreciated. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on alt tech. You can find the links to my parlor page and my BitChute channel in the description as well. All right. So the first challenge of the island is to find a beach to set up camp. It's a lot safer to be on a beach where you can see everything than it is to be in a forest full of snakes and crocodiles. Let's see how the men handle this challenge. It's 4 p.m. With only two hours of daylight remaining, the men's priority has to be finding a safe place to shelter for the night. Paul thinks the group's best option is a beach. I personally want to just plow on and make it. I mean, it's going to get darker in here quicker than it is on the beach. Paul pushes on, despite the group's growing descent. I found the sea. (laughs) So that was quick. A few hours of intense stress, everyone pushed through, and they all made it on the first day. As for the women, their story is a little bit more complicated and requires more than a single clip to discuss. Their first mistake was that they decided to split up. So one group's going to go look, and one group's going to stay here. Who's in the go group? Me. Can I come? Yeah. Have you got your whistles? <laughs> yes, we're whistles. Going. I can tell that these women watched way too much Scooby-Doo when they were kids. You <laughs> never want to split up when you're in a dangerous situation. Even Bear Grill. Oh. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> but he killed me because I know he's not telling jokes. He being dead ass fucking serious. But look, y'all. If you in a survival like situation, you're stronger together, right? Not apart, not apart. Right. And these women really sat here. That's why when we had that conversation about, am I gonna take her talking about what the fuck to do in combat or what the fuck we would do? No, I'm, no, that's stupid. They split up right from the get go. They all came to a consensus together. Like, yeah, we're gonna split up. Watch what happened when they split up says it's a bad idea splitting up your group is a high risk strategy the show says they split up to protect a fire they made the previous night by the way we're on day two and the women only ended up walking a few hundred feet away from their drop points also you can take the fire with you not to mention you would either have to move the fire or make a new one anyway when you found a new camp did they think about this for more than 10 seconds However, I will be fair and point out that some of the women said this was a stupid idea. Hold on a minute. You think that you can walk right round this island? We don't water? know they, anything. I, don't know. I, think, I so. think this decision has been made a little too quickly. But they split up anyway. <laughs> on this first trip, they find a beach that isn't that great, and they come back. So that was all well and good. But now with that success, they are a little bit more confident about their bad decision, and they split up again. One of their previous dissenters, Jamie, joins them this time. More desperate than ever to get out of the jungle, the women are sending out another search party to find a beach camp. Seven women volunteer to join Fee on the trek, including furniture maker Kate, Abby, Fran and three others stay behind in their temporary camp to keep the vital fire alight. If you watch the show, what you'll find with the women is a lot of feminist notions of independence. You have to understand that the independence we experience in the West is a luxury. Being by yourself in a survival situation or in any dangerous situation is stupid. There is power in numbers. The more people you have, the more people you have to fight and solve problems. 
you also have to understand that literally no one in civilization can survive on their own. There may be a couple of outliers, but outside of them, no one is capable of surviving on their own without using tools or knowledge that other people have invented or discovered. Real quick, I'm glad he said that. Know why? I don't want no ladies coming over here talking shit saying, well, y'all didn't think y'all could do it. He just clearly said it, and I agree 100% with him. Nobody can really survive on their own. Like, just Most one definitely. person by themselves? Like, yeah, literally, one person by themselves? No, we like we don't even think that. You know how hard it is to lift uh, wood to, to build the structure by your goddamn self? It's like, nigga, drop, drop us on an island, man. Like, we got to, first off, like, because I know a lot of people, and that's what, this, he's going to explain what the women did. The first thing that you should do if you get dropped on the island is look for shelter. Look to find a good spot to build a shelter. Don't look for fucking water. Don't look for fucking food. You can do that later because at first off, you need somewhere to lay your goddamn head. You can survive for a while. Watch what the fuck he says that they did. Like, right, look, I'm, look. Right. Come this on, man. Is... Come on with it, man. <laughs> Come on. True independence is a myth. However, I do think it's funny when a feminist screams about how she is strong and independent while her ex-husband is paying her child support and alimony or she's on welfare. In civilization, we rely heavily on the functioning interactions of people who have different useful skills. If those systems fail, most of us are screwed. If that happens, people are going to find out just how dependent they are on everyone else. If you want to succeed, your goal in life is to team up with people who serve a role that is complementary to yours. That's what works. What doesn't work is trying to do everything by yourself just so you can say you're independent. Bit. Independence or self-reliance is not about doing everything by yourself. A person who is independent is someone who pulls his own weight instead of being dependent on the group to pull his weight for him. That is what we should be striving for. Getting back to the show, this is the point where things start to go downhill for the women. Remember how the guys found a beach in a few hours? Well, the women are on day two, they split up, they found a beach, but the search slash expedition party gets lost on the way back. I'm used to being in forests, oh, cool. and I'm not going to be really happy if people start telling me I'm going the wrong way. Yeah. The most important thing is that we go, and we go in a straight line. Now, honestly, I have no idea if this is right, but we've made a plan, so we've got to stick to it. This is actually the opposite direction. This is, we're going back towards the beach. The expedition party are deep in the jungle interior and have mistakenly headed north in the wrong direction from their temporary camp. Now completely lost, they're doubling back on themselves. Now all kinds of problems start occurring. The most obvious of which is that it's very hard for beginners to navigate a forest without walking in circles, and their forester was useless. Which means if they are lucky enough to find a beach, they have to navigate back to the camp and then navigate back to the beach. They just turn one trip into three trips, making their gamble three times as hard. <laughs> Problem number two, the team who is at camp basically can't do anything like work on a shelter, so their time is wasted. In nature, you do not have the luxury of wasting time. If you watch the show, Damn. you'll see that downtime is a very consistent problem on the women's team. But here is the biggest problem in this event. Each team got a doctor and some kind of medical assistance. Dr. Piers was the doctor for the men's team, and his assistant was Barney, who is a paramedic. On the women's team, we have Dr. Belinda and her assistant, Lauren, who is a nurse. The problem is that the team's only doctor and only nurse went to go find a beach, while back in camp, a team member, Fran, is dying. Oh my god, bro, bro, we gotta talk about that, man. Like, what? You're only two medical trained people. Both went out to goddamn wow. go do some shit. Wow. Like, you, nobody thought to leave one of them there. Let's find out what happened to friends. Suppose we friends having an emergency. She's down. Friend Come on, we're banging. Passed out. She's crying. <laughs> Friends fainted. Out at sea, my safety response they team are assessing 24-year-old Fran. After five days without anywhere near enough water, Fran has succumbed to dehydration. Now, five I will give Fran credit water. because she five did tell days? the medical team not to... Five days, bro. And here, think about this. We oh keep God. Losing, they like, I don't think we're giving this shit enough attention. 
Bro, the men found a fucking ocean. They found a beach that they could settle on within hours. Right. The women are still in day two. No, is it five days now? In the, in the oh, sports. it might be still five days now. I thought oh, I thought they said said that uh, they can five go five days, days without, without water. water. Well, there you go. It's getting even worse because if it's fucking five days and they ain't found a goddamn beach yet, that is, dude. The men found a beach in hours. <laughs> hours. Let's keep going. To give her Holy. any extra nutrients, so she wouldn't have an advantage over her other team members, which is pretty brave. But I keep thinking. How could you be so disorganized that you wouldn't think to keep someone with medical experience in each group? I understand that they have a medical staff on call, but it still takes a while to get there. And if there is any intense emergency, then the person who gets hurt is basically dead. Certainly, sure. if there was no on-call medical team, this would have been a very stupid move. So the medical team evaluates Fran, and it turns out that she got dehydrated. Dehydrated when earlier... It was raining outside. <laughs> Honestly, I know this is all hindsight and backseat driving, but I'm trying to be fair here. They had a massive water canister and a bunch of improvised bamboo cups. It's not too much of a stretch to put some of those cups outside and have them collect water for you. This is the first instance of several that the women get saved what? by the medical team, to which I will say the men never had an injury so severe that they absolutely had to be saved by the medical staff. Oh, no, no. I know you had something for me, John. Go ahead. Wow, man. Are, are we kidding? Here? She didn't put out any cups or jugs for the rainwater? Like, no, not even one. 14 she women. She's sitting there sweating. Her whole fucking skin is moist. Her clothes are fucking moist. It's humid. And it's raining. And you're not saying, well, shit, let me get some fucking water open your mouth or something like bro yeah shout out to you tilt Charlie. your head thanks. back bro wow, thanks for man. coming over here i appreciate you here yeah yeah bro it, it, it and, and just so y'all know it's gonna get stupider like it's just a start yeah. they couldn't find a goddamn fucking they couldn't find a beach to goddamn camp up on they damn sure split up like some dummies yeah, it ain't no, no bro. Look, look, I'm just play it, bro. I'm just play it. One got stung by a non lethal scorpion. They called the medical team for it, but he would have been fine. The second was Will, who fell and ruptured a tendon in his arm. Will was evacuated from the island, so he wouldn't permanently damage his arm, but if he had no outside help, he would have survived. The women, however, were saved multiple times by the medical staff, which I will <laughs> get to, but let's continue with the story. The situation with Fran gets resolved, and the expedition party still has not gotten back after like three days. <laughs> Convinced they're close to camp, Georgie and Lauren go ahead to wreck their surroundings. Just, we're just yeah. looking. Bro, 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 you, you were right. It's got to be five days. It's got to be five days because they went out. They, they were there for two days. Fucking three days. Bro, this is crazy. They were there for the first day. They sent the fucking group out. They split up and sent the group out. They said they came back because they couldn't find us. So that's two days. Then they fucking went out, and now they've been out for five days. That's seven fucking days, and you got two of your medical staff out. The men found a beach within the first couple hours. No man. compass. No compass. Man. Let, let, they've let, been let, lost let. for fucking three days in the fucking... <laughs> Holy shit. Bruh, wow. like, come on now. Like, ain't nobody ever heard of, like, mark a tree... Mark a couple trees and let us know this is where we came from. Ain't nobody said it. They got machetes now. They got machetes. All right, man. Roll the All fucking right, tape. Let King. it. Get back to where we are. No fucking way. Can't be. We are. The expedition party have spent all day in the searing heat, only to find they've walked in one big circle back to Coconut <laughs> Beach. <laughs> So the camp party decides to go search for the expedition party, and they wow. do the one extremely obvious thing that the expedition party could have done, which was follow the coastline. The women at camp oh! are finally taking their fate into their own hands. Drop a goddamn bomb. Just follow the beach. Just walk on the beach line to find a suitable beach that y'all could land on instead of sleeping in the jungle. That's why your dumb ass got stung by a fucking scorpion. <laughs> like, because you sleeping in the woods with the animals. Like, you know, 
What you man. got, <laughs> man? Wow, they not all, that's why they were lost for fucking three days. They walked the entire big ass fucking circle, a few hundred meters apart, for what fucking three days. Just to show back up to the wrong beach. Now think about this. You know why they Come did on. that? And I want everybody to know why they did that. They had a woman in the group that was so-called a forester. She knows how to navigate <laughs> force. And ain't oh, nobody shit. wanna call her out when she kept walking in goddamn circles. Don't let it be men. Cause if I feel like we done walked by here a couple times, I'm be like, look, bro. I'm good. You can keep on fucking leading that party and whoever want to fuck follow you. I know we've been by here. I'm not following bruh. you no more, bro. We're heading and back. Y'all, y'all, y'all see my jaws drop on this whole thing, right? Oh my god. Hey, you know what the funny thing is? It gets worse. <laughs> roll the tape. It roll gets the tape, worse. Man. Let's roll get the it. tape. They haven't found us, so we've got no alternative but to find them. So we've stayed and we waited. I don't, I don't even know. Two days, three days. We rescued. Now we have to just go and blow our whistles madly to see if anyone's hearing us, and that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. Unaware of the expedition party's whereabouts, the five women are searching the coastline. After everyone got off the boat, they didn't actually make it that far into the forest. And yes, everyone knew that because of the first search party. All the women who got lost would have had to do was walk the coastline and blow their whistles, and they would have easily found the camp. And I say easily because the camp party was able to find the expedition party within a few hours of walking the coastline. Even if they walked the wrong way, it probably wouldn't have taken more than a day. Just for comparison, I will point out that at the end of the show, two men, Kyle and Sam, got lost in the forest at night and were still able to make it back to camp in the same day. I will also point out that the fire the women were trying to protect went out, making the whole reason they split up completely pointless. Eventually, they find a beach to camp on after like a week. Meanwhile, the men have a their week. entire camp set up. Damn. However, credit where credit is due, the women did make a fire on the first day, and the men didn't make one until day two. Oh, you nearly there. Yeah, we got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I sound too cocky too early. Start to the fuck. I don't think we should at right all. There. But right now, this we're, is we're winning. Although once the men's fire is oh, made, yes. it oh, never yes. goes out. The entire six weeks, the women's fire, however, Damn. goes out multiple times, and they could not restart it. This leads wow. us to the second time the women had to get saved. Think about that. Think about that. And you heard what that old lady wow. said. We're women. Wow. Y'all made a fire on the first day. Congratulations. I'm not even going to bullshit you. I gave you a hand wow. clap on that. But the men made their fire on the goddamn second day. So one day difference. But guess what? The men found the man. Look, all right. They kept it burning for six weeks. Bro, it took them a whole week to find shelter. Find the beach to fucking set up. The men had already had a fucking shelter. They found the beach. Man, look, here, let's let them talk. Let's let them talk, y'all. Wow, man, roll the tape. Holy the women have now been without water for more than 48 hours, and they are dangerously dehydrated. Their situation like is now beyond critical. Medical advice is that the castaways are now so critically dehydrated that within a few hours, their lives will genuinely be in danger. So really, I've got no choice but to intervene. And the women will be given a working bow drill set. So we have women cheering about how they are doing better than the men by making their first fire so quickly. <laughs> but shortly thereafter, in the first week, one of their team members, Fran, would have died without medical assistance. And by week two, their whole team would have died of dehydration because they didn't have a fire. Damn. For reference, you can survive about three Damn. days without water, but keep in mind that they're on a tropical island that is commonly over 85 right. degrees Fahrenheit. Dehydration right. is a reoccurring problem for the women. Now, I haven't mentioned this, but anyone is allowed to leave the island anytime they want. At this point, three out of the 14 men have left voluntarily, and two out of the 14 women are gone. One voluntarily, and Fran from earlier, was evacuated because of medical issues. Both teams ended up losing four people by the end of six weeks, so they were even on that. 
that being said, let's move on to the next issue. There are multiple cases in the show where things are just given to the women and the women take no initiative to grab it. This brings us to nature's biggest handout in the show. Bruh, I'm not even gonna bullshit. I know exactly what you're about to talk about. They gave the women a pig. Man. Like they had no let, food. They let, gave the women a let, pig. Let's go, man. What? Bruh, don't bruh, don't keep the pe- people. I got y'all. We- let's go. Which are two piglets it. that just walk onto the women's beach camp. There's a pig. Pig. Back. Hello. All I've eaten in a pigs. week are a few handfuls of yucca and coconut. We've got two of the cutest little piglets. Yeah. Their little tails wag like dogs are so cute. Everything that moves on the island really should be seen as a potential source of food, and that includes the pigs. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Come in, Sage. <laughs> Keep in mind that these women have basically had no food for over a week, yeah. and they are in a situation where they could die of starvation. It's not just Whoa. that, but also the fact that you get weak when you don't eat after a few days, which makes every activity more and more wow. dangerous. With that said, instead of turning those pigs into food, they befriend them. They sleep with the pigs, they feed the pigs, they comb the pigs' hair, they turn them into pets and name them Sage and Onion. They pretty much do everything with the pigs, except <laughs> eat them. Then, even worse, they determined that the beach that they were on wasn't that great, so they moved to another beach, and they leave the pigs at the old beach. <laughs> the screen you are watching is causing you permanent eye damage. If you are staring at a screen for more than one hour a day... Wow. Look, wow. if y'all think I'm over here on some bullshit, bro. Like, I really want more females to go watch this shit. Watch both of them, man. They, these are home-trained, farm-raised fucking pigs. Any wild pig is not walking up to human beings. These pigs came over here. These pigs let these ladies comb their hair, sleep <laughs> with them. <laughs> Bruh, like, and look, look, look. They put the pigs out there because these ladies had eaten in a, in a good while. Just like, right. look, man, maybe if we give them the pigs, they kill them and they can eat. Right. They didn't even kill them. And wow. then they fucking left them. <laughs> Left them and moved to a whole nother beach. Bro, why here? Watch some funny shit. Watch this funny shit, y'all. Here you go, listen. Hi, onion. Look at us. We look like survivors. The editor must have been laughing uncontrollably when he put the clip oh of them leaving the pigs, followed by one of them saying, We look like survivors. <laughs> it wasn't me who did that. I just trimmed out a few seconds. But wait, there's more. They leave the pigs on the old beach. The pigs follow them to the new camp. And they still don't eat the pig. This whole situation reminded me of when I did that video on Naked and Afraid wow. about Cassie and oh Forrest. I only covered that one episode of the show, but I watched two seasons of it to know what a typical episode looks like. Oh, a very common problem on that show was that the women would refuse to kill animals to eat, even if they weren't vegetarian. Keep in mind that if you go on Naked and Afraid, you're supposed to be a survival expert. Well, at least in the first two seasons, they were supposed to be. So even the trained women will commonly refuse to do the work to provide the food they have no problem with buying at the store right. in a fancy package. Right. The women on the island were the same way. The fate of Sage and Onion hangs in the balance. The women have befriended them and now can't agree whether or not to eat them. I am hungry. I don't think I could look into his little piggy eyes and then kill him. At this point in the show, <laughs> the men had to run out and go find their food. They were able to successfully oh, capture a crocodile while the women had food oh, just walk up to them and they were unwilling to do oh, what it takes to oh, survive. And I think this brings up an interesting point that holds a lot of people back. This happens everywhere, but I see it on YouTube all the time. So that's the example I'm going to go with. YouTubers will say things like, I don't want to create interesting titles. That's clickbait. Look, that's fine, but have fun getting like one tenth of the viewers because your title isn't good. And I literally mean that a bad title will harm you that much. Not to mention there are plenty of ways to make good titles without lying to your viewers. But that's a skill that you have to practice. Not putting the work in to learn how to attract an audience says to me that you don't want to put the time in or make the sacrifices it takes to be successful. 
if you are going to survive hey y'all i'm gonna make my titles better man i ain't gonna bullshit i've been lacking but uh, man that's a on an island title, where there aren't man. enough plants to sustain <laughs> you, you that, then you need to hunt or you will die none of the I women like were willing to kill except for lauren the nurse everyone but lauren and jamie who was a vegetarian and only ate plants should be ashamed of themselves for eating meat without being willing to do the dirty work themselves. So Lauren does eventually kill the two piglets, and the women finally get to eat, except for Jamie, the vegetarian. Now, there are some questions that people had about the show that I certainly have as well. For example, how exactly do two domesticated pigs just suddenly walk up onto the women's camp without a care in the world <laughs> when the women were starving? Also curious, there were two piglets from an earlier scene the women found by chance, but ignored because their mom was around and they were afraid of being attacked. However, just a few minutes later into the episode, two very similar looking piglets show up without a mom to protect them. That's very <laughs> questionable, but I don't have any evidence to say that the producers released those pigs to help out the women. However, Bear Grylls admitted that the show stocked the island with different animals, so everything there wasn't entirely native. But then people also found it strange that this fully grown pig was just laying out there in the open, not caught in a trap, perfectly fine with a bunch of people walking up to it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, see it? Oh, yeah. A hunting party led by Lauren. Has Bruh, they trained that goddamn pig and left it there for them ladies to come and get it, bro. Bruh, they trait that pig. Bro, pigs don't even sleep like that. That I'm pig was little... drugged. Bro, that, pig, that was drugged. pig is high on something, bro. Like they drugged that pig. They trained it. That pig pigs do not lay out in the open like that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's keep going. At this no, no, at this point in time. At this point in time. You got to wonder, do women need men to survive? That's the question. That's, That's the, question. the question. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's oh see if they need it. Stumbled across a sleeping pig in the middle of the jungle. In the middle of the goddamn jungle. The pig was not asleep. <laughs> People were saying that the pig was drugged, and that's why the women were able to catch it. But I have a different explanation for why it put up so little resistance. Okay. Later, the women found out that the pig was full of ticks. The pig was probably half dead when they tried to capture it, which is why it didn't make much of an effort to run away. So I will give the women credit for catching that one. Okay. However, this leads us to hey, our- Hey, 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 guess what? In our face. Because I thought the pig was drugged. I thought the right. pig was drugged. Right. So, Something had to be. It, it, there was a cause for the the pig's inability to fight back, right? You know, you know, so this is the reason was that the pig wasn't being a pig. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, let's keep on going. We wrong on that one. We can take that. You know what that's called? It's called accountability. We got it. Our third crisis, outside of their camp now being infested with ticks. For some reason, the women decide to preserve the pig leftovers in one of their water canisters what? and bury it underground. What? This didn't work, and all the women got sick the next day from eating rotten meat, except oh for Jamie, God. the vegetarian. It's at this point they make their most disastrous screw-up oh that would have God. killed everyone if the emergency medical team didn't they help them. Their water canister the women away, took right? the water canister, which was full of rotten pig, and instead of trying to sanitize it, they threw it away. I knew With it! The preserved pork <laughs> no longer it! edible. Oh, the yo, women I have removed the pig's this, remains, yeah. and Jerry can of putrid meat from the camp. Unconvinced they could salvage a rancid jerry can and use it to purify the water again, the women throw it away. Now with only one jerry can to produce all their water, the women are unknowingly heading towards oh a dehydration God, crisis. What were they thinking? This messed up their entire filtration system and cut the amount of water they could produce in half. The women used one canister to filter the water and one canister to boil it. By the way, speaking of the men, they had a far more sophisticated water filtration system than the women did that resulted in cleaner water, and the men never seemed yeah, to have a problem with dehydration. Around, they don't want to they drink 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 water. Water. Dehydrated piss 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 water. 
Have you learned to hate drinking warm water? And actually, it's it's good. It's really good. And it, the sauce is you don't, you don't have to kind of just knock it back. It's decent water. Yeah. The water was not an issue. Yeah. And actually, dehydration was your own fault rather than lack of water. Yeah. Yeah. So the women threw away their water canister, which <laughs> half their water supply, and now they're all dehydrated. Really? Oh, shit. How hard is it to wash the container it out in the ocean, died. let it air out in the sun, bro, and boil it. water in it to think kill the rest it. of the bacteria? He's calling it out, bro. You are on it. You're on an island. Bro. Salt, d fucking like it desanitizes shit. Fill that bitch up with salt water, drain it out a couple times, and leave it out in the dry. They said, "Fuck this canister, bro." <laughs> Fuck it. Wow. Let's keep wow. Going. let's keep fucking going, bro. Look, it gets worse. I'm I, I actually I gets... actually I'm very impressed with this one today. I'm impressed with this one. This is answering a lot of questions, man, on why. All right. Just look, look, it, I, the biggest point that I think we can take from it right now, just because you feel like you can do something, don't mean you can do something. It, it, that's that's the that's the biggest part of the lesson here. Let's keep going, man. You've been boiling water to kill bacteria oh, the entire time you've been on the island. A little while <laughs> later, all the women almost died and had to be saved by the medical team. This medical visit came with the extremely obvious advice, which was telling the women to sanitize the dirty canister. You can hear the medical team's eyes rolling when they say this. Your bodies are just starting to fail at this point. Now, there's no easy way to say this. Um, I'm teetering right on the brink of pulling you all off the island for medical reasons, over. The solution is... Use the other jerry can. I can't say it any other way. So the women don't die of dehydration, and later in the episode, one of the women gets a random ship that passes by. Hey, hey, hey. Who was the person that told them to fucking use all the jerry can? Was it a man or was it a woman? I'm just gonna leave that right there. Let that marinate. I <laughs> to give her a free fish. You have fish? You have fish? One fish? He's you gonna throw it. it. Oh, oh, you're very, very kind. Whoa! Go get him in a blowjob. Now, what? I think that is a <laughs> barracuda. We got it. Gave her a mackerel. Yeah. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. Hold on. We going back it. to that. Did okay, that's that? totally not cheating. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, another thing you will wait, notice wait, if you wait, watch this Did she say, wait, did she say, she said, say yes, any other yes, way. she said that. Listen. So the women don't die of dehydration, well, and shit. later in the episode, one of the women gets a random ship that passes by to give her a free fish. You have fish? You have fish? One fish? He's yeah. gonna throw it! Oh, oh, you're very, very kind. Whoa! <laughs> Now, I think that is a barracuda. We got a fish. Yeah. Bruh. Oh, my Bruh. God. It's awesome. Okay, that's totally not cheating. God damn. Bruh. Bruh. I almost got the fuck up and walked off. No job. <laughs> She caught a fish? <laughs> they caught a fish? Oh, my... Bruh. Man, bruh, listen. Say to say, listen, that. man. Listen, man. The cameras weren't rolling. Nobody was there for accountability. The... the, the hey, everybody... I'm not going to knock it. Everybody has that one great lie about a fish they caught, man. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm not even gonna knock her. Everybody got that one great big fish that got away, one great big fish that they caught and ate before anybody could see it. Bruh, this girl, biggest lie is they caught a barracuda that is a deep water fish from the shore without a fucking fishing rod. Man, listen. <laughs> Keep running. Let's keep on running. Roll it, man. Roll now, another roll, thing you roll. will notice if you watch this season, by the way, it's season two, and it's free if you have Amazon Prime, but if you watch it, you will see that one of the big problems the women have is laziness. I think someone forgot to tell them that this is survival. 
you are supposed to work from the time the sun comes up until the sun goes down and you can't see anymore. If you watch the men, they barely had any downtime or vast periods of slacking off until the last day. But with the women, Bear's first perception of them was that they were too busy chatting instead of moving forward. You know, it's four o'clock. It's going to get dark here in a couple of what hours. And already, you know, there have been 15 minutes chat, chat, chat on the beach. They need to work hard, get moving. That wasn't just a problem they had on the first day. Here's more slacking off from the women. 2 p.m., Julie is still fishing, whilst the rest of the women are more interested in sunbathing and relaxing on the beach. Oh, this is why we came here. This bay is the absolute dream, isn't it? Beth and Lauren wake to discover none of the other women have done any work. We stayed up. We cooked breakfast for everybody. We cooked supper for everybody. And then we needed a kind of a little bit of a break today. And because we've had a break, everybody else has had a fucking break and nothing's happened. Keep in mind that the previous clip comes from the same episode where they were all dying of dehydration. <laughs> and it continues up until the final week. Here is Belinda, the doctor, splashing around in the water with Jamie instead of working when everyone is starving and dehydrated. While the rest of the group toil away on the bed shelter, Jamie and Belinda decide to take the afternoon off. After watching the show, <laughs> my thought was that they wouldn't have had half of the problems they did oh, if they just man. worked harder. That, and my final point, which was that there was zero leadership on the women's island whatsoever. From day one, the women have governed themselves in a leaderless community, trying to make group decisions. What, was there not enough wood? Have we ran out of wood now? We ran out of wood last night and everyone went You're to You're joking. There's no leader. Not one person rules the roost. We work collectively. So if, say, I want to go foraging, Isn't that what I don't have to be told to go wanna... foraging. I'm going to go foraging. All the decisions we've made thus far have been made collaboratively. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Isn't that what right. they act? This is what they say all the time. And Isn't we this see what the they results. say all the time? Hey, the but, uh, yesterday, hey, uh, what, what happens if a man puts his foot down on the decision? Well, you know, it's got to be a conversation of whether or not he can do it or not. He's going to. Are you serious? Who These y'all are feel results. It? And Philip in here, what it do, Philip Smooth just rolled in. Y'all behind me and Solomon been here for a minute. And yes, this is Think Before You Sleep. Bro, this is why we say that we cannot have this shit going on in our community. We cannot have this shit going on in America. They want a hive mind to fucking, this is everybody has a decision on this shit. Right. No, motherfucker. There is one person in charge and other people do their role. These women almost killed themselves like three, four, five fucking times so far. They gave these women pigs and they didn't even want to kill the pigs. They, these, were, man. they were forced to kill the pigs when they were absolutely hungry. I mean, they about to, when they about to die. <laughs> about to check the fuck out. Oh my God. Gave the pig, bro. They gave them pigs names. <laughs> like, bro, you gave them names. Groomed the pig with combs. Holy shit. And I know, I know all of y'all done fucking heard this shit before. Like, when a dude got like a bunch of animals and shit, he's like, oh, what's that animal name? It's like, that, his name's Dog. <laughs> what's that cat's name? Cat. Because <laughs> eventually, the motherfucker, what's that? That's a chicken. Yeah, what's his name? Chicken. These yeah. bitches gonna be gone eventually, bro. What are you talking about? That that's that's crazy, man. Let's keep it rolling, man. Let's keep it rolling. It, look, it gets worse. I know it gets worse. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a big saying at the end of this. Uh, system where there's a leader. Want to join the six figure uh, club? Google and God other tech companies work. are hiring hundreds of thousands of workers and not. So how's that working for you? My understanding is that you have all almost died twice. As I said, being independent and doing whatever you want is a luxury afforded to you by living in a first world country. You need leadership and you need someone to set goals for the group. Even if- Bro, he just said something right there. Like all these women out here talking about women rights and all this shit. It, it, it's beautiful that you can say that in the first world country. 
Take your ass right. over there to goddamn Afghanistan and talk that bullshit. Take your ass right. to Zimbabwe and talk that bullshit. Take your ass to goddamn North Korea and talk that shit. Let's see how far you get. You only got the luxury shit, of doing right. this because men have allowed it. Right now in Afghanistan, they, women can't go nowhere without a man. You can't board no goddamn plane. You can't take a taxi. You can't do shit. The Taliban got smooth. that shit on a lot. Smooth, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Smooth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Smooth. Fucking, uh, yeah, man, look. They don't even let them go to school right now. And I can understand why they don't want them to. We can say it's fucked up over here on this side, but I understand what they're right. trying to prevent. But uh, let's right. keep going. If those goals aren't that great, it's better that you're working towards something rather than working towards nothing. And of course, lesser goals can always be tossed out as better ones are found. However, the women were rather good at doing nothing, partially because they had no direction, and they should have decided on a leader right away. Both the men and the women failed to do that within the first few days. Thanks, Phil. As for the men, although it wasn't really talked about, I believe they eventually established Will, the guy who ruptured a tendon and had to be evacuated, as their leader. Leaders decide on goals, and you need to have a goal to run a functioning group. You need to have goals to run a functioning life. You can't just follow your bliss and only forage when you want to forage. Survival and success are about getting yourself to do a bunch of things you don't want to do, not about doing whatever you want when it's convenient for you to do so. Mm. The second thing leaders do, especially if they are smart, is divide labor so that people are set in the roles they are best at. You have 14 people, but you don't need 14 fishers. Someone has to fish, someone has to collect water, someone has to keep the fire alive, and someone has to build shelter. It's up to the leader to decide who is best to handle those jobs. Last, leaders are there to handle conflict and ensure people get along. Conflict will kill a group, which surprisingly was pretty well displayed in the first episode of The Men's Island as it caused one of their very useful builders to leave. Remember, I did say the men had their struggles too, though conflict was a pretty big problem on the women's island as well. Eventually, the women come to their senses and make Lauren the leader. To me, Lauren was the clear choice because she says things like this. I will not let people see that I'm feeling just as weak as them because I actually feel like some people need strength in other people to keep them going, and I'm determined to be that person. Personally, I think this is one of the few good decisions that the women made. A leader is the person who goes first. That's why it's called a leader they lead. Lauren was the first to kill an animal so they could all eat when no one else wanted to. Actually, outside of a few fish at the very end, I don't remember any of the women except for Lauren killing anything for food. Lauren was also the only one on the team who had any meaningful survival experience. In a podcast recorded over a year after the show was filmed, Lauren states that she joined a competition to row across the Atlantic Ocean where she was stuck in a boat with one friend for over three months. About a month of that was just them trying to survive while they were waiting for help because their boat broke. She didn't finish the race, but she went back after the island and did the race again and got second place. It takes a heavy amount of grit to do that. Anyway, things immediately got better once the women... Asked. Hey, and shout out to Miss Lauren for that type of shit. Because I know even a lot yeah. of dudes probably wouldn't want to sign up for no bullshit like that. Shout out to her on that one. ...established a leader, and they actually started getting stuff done in the last week. Also, for some reason, they chose this person, Beth, as a leader too. But as far as what we can see on the show, Lauren pretty much did all the work leading. So now we are at the end of the show. The men made it on the island for six weeks, and the women sort of made it on the island for six weeks. <laughs> I did, however, find it funny that both groups went right to gender stereotypes. The men were primarily focused on hunting for food, while the women were primarily focused on gathering. At the end of the six weeks, each team showed off their camps to Bear Grylls. The men's camp was very utilitarian, while the women's camp was very decorated and made over. One more thing, the women slept communally while the men slept individually. So this show turned out to be a real win for feminism on breaking gender stereotypes. By the way, there were more examples on them conforming to stereotypes than the ones I gave. Another win for feminism is that Ruth England called season one of the show sexist because only men were allowed on that season. 
She said it portrayed. Bro, like, hold up, man. I'm gonna read these comments before this lady talk about how the show is sexist when it's all men and all women. But then when you, man, look, we ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, you cannot only have one leader. <clears throat> it's not technically one leader, but somebody has to be the president. We got a lot of leaders, but everybody plays yeah. their role. So I agree with you on that, Philip. Fucking uh, Smooth said, when this is done, I will link a video to a woman that can make a house out of dirt to provide the other side. Yeah, hey, look, man, no bullshit. I've seen them people over in, I forget, man, they be getting like 3 million views on YouTube. I, I ain't seen the women do it, but I've seen these two guys get together and just go in the forest and make some crazy shit. I don't know how long it take them to make it, but they be making some shit. Let me say, even though this is accurate, there are billions of women out there and some of them can make it happen. Yeah, look, we never said that it's all women. It's never all women. It's just what the majority is. Like, if you took 10 women right here and said, hey, how many women can survive on their own? You might have one or two that can, but it's it, it's still one or two. That's only like 10 to 20%. Right. Uh, and Philip is laughing. <laughs> Philip is laughing over here. Let he go. Let's keep going. She called this show sexist, man. She called it sexist. Now that's crazy. Stereotypes. By the way, there were more examples on them conforming to stereotypes than the ones I gave. Another win for feminism is that Ruth England called season one of the show sexist because only men were allowed on that season. She said it portrayed the notion that women needed to be helped to survive. Well. Mm -hmm. Seeing that the women almost died twice throughout the six weeks and almost had their team member Fran die in the first week, I don't see how Ruth England's notion that average women can survive without men is proven. So many people watched that first series and said, ah, oh, you know, women would have done much better. They would have multitasked. They wouldn't have had the ego. Still, the show went to great lengths at the end to make the women seem better than they were. If I hadn't turned up today, and I turned up in six months, I bet these guys would be in pretty good shape. And I knew it. I knew the stereotype was wrong, you know? But I knew they could nail this. And see, shame on you, Bear Grooves, because we all know from watching this shit so far that they would have died. <laughs> like, bro, we know that. So, like, him doing that, hyping it up, that's just for the show. And, you know, to push it out there, man, gender, gender neutral type shit. What you got, Don't Drive? This, first and foremost, I got to say, they absolutely can't survive without men. And it's just crazy how nature has its way of finding the root purpose for us to survive as an org organism, let alone a species. To give male men the right job, women their decorative jobs, and we function as a society. This is crazy. The, f the right. funny thing, the funny thing, sorry, the funny thing that I, I, I found is that it took one woman to kill the pigs after they were near death in, from starving. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, that blows my mind. What were you going to say? No, I'm just like, it's, um, like, with these women saying this shit is sexist, like, they keep saying that shit, this is right. sexist and shit. Right. If we took men away, and I'm going to say this. Now, I truly believe this, y'all. If y'all don't like it, man, let me know. Write me in the comment section telling me I'm full of shit. They say we need each other. Yes, that statement is true, but it's true if you got but you got to put it in context. Right. Men need women to reproduce. Right. Women need, well, women need men to survive. Right. If you took it away, like, you, you got a bunch of men... They can survive to the end of their days. But if you got a bunch of women, they're going to die before their life expectancy is, is over with. I, right. I don't care if people get mad about that. We've already seen that these women would have died in the first fucking week. And the people can say, well, this is anecdotal. This is just one situation. These are all these strong, independent type women. These, Especially these women from the UK. Like, these men figured it out. They found a, a home base in the first couple hours. It, it took the women, like, how many days? Five, six, seven, eight days? Five, six, seven days, three days lost, uh, uh, fucking two days to start a fire, lost a fire. Oh, my God. Bro, they over here leading by committee. 
by committee. <laughs> Fuck that. Look, I will take your advice under, like, I will take your suggestions under advisement. Right. But somebody has to lead. And that's a problem when we have these relationships where the woman wants to lead and the man, like, here, man, the man step back. I promise you, man, that woman going to end, she going to lead you right to the end of that relationship. Yep. If you let her lead that shit. Bro, let me go. You want to keep going? You got something else you got to say? No, no, no. I think, uh, I think, I think we're right on the money. Let's finish this and let's see if our minds change at the end. All right, let's get it. Wow, the pandering is strong here. There is no <laughs> way they would have made it six months. How about this? What if we just accepted that men and women have certain limitations and moved on with our lives? Hey. Now for this last part, I want to talk a little bit about the men. They didn't have much drama, but there was one really interesting episode the men had that I think brings up something very valuable. Bring to say slow. this euphemistically, the men's team had some very strong personalities. As I said before, one member, Paul, left the island because he couldn't get along with another team member who also ended up leaving the island. <laughs> Vic, who manages a cleaning company, also had a strong personality, which made him very judgmental of the people he felt were slacking off. They actually created three episodes out of this based on Vic, probably because it was the only drama they had on the men's island. In one of the episodes, Vic has a dispute with one of the cameramen, Sam. Unlike Naked and Afraid, the cameramen have to participate in the game too. Also, side note, there were two Sams, and this is a different Sam from the one I mentioned earlier who got lost. That being said, Sam's value to the group is very abstract because Sam is creative. The unfortunate truth is that generally the majority of creative people don't produce anything useful. However, if you don't have any creative people, your society will falter to the ones that do. In this regard... Think about that. Think about that. Because we know that a lot of women go into creatives. He he said, like, look, if that's all you got, your society will fall. Right. But we need creatives. Not saying that like like not saying that like that's a like fifty percent of what we need. Like man, like maybe like right. twenty, thirty percent. We need people that think of different ideas and come up with new shit, but at the end of the day, certain shit has to get done. And right. that's what I think a lot of women are fighting against. They feel like we disregard what they do. And honestly, when you sit around here, I, I think all guys know this. When you got that one guy that just says, I'm the best at this and I'm the best at that, people gonna do their best to make sure you know that you're not the best. They're going to disregard what the fuck you talking about, and they're going to try their best to prove that you ain't what you talking about. Like, so when all these women talk about I'm strong and independent, like, dudes sit back and be like, hey, all right, show me. Let me see. Uh, I'm glad Kevin Samuels always brings this up. Yeah, he actually does. Philip on point. He bring it up, and a lot of people still don't go over and watch it. This simply this simple. proves everything we've always talked about when, I come to the, when it comes to the genders. Yeah. Like, bro, it, we all do, like, bro, that's the shit that gets me, man. Like, females just need to stop trying to be men, bro. We need y'all to be women. Like, we really need y'all to be women. Like, stop trying to be us. <laughs> and the fucked up shit is when they come over here and try to be us, they get mad about it when they turn 35 and can't have no kids and can't find no man. It's like, <laughs> what we told y'all, bro. Hey, and it's, and uh, to say that is to say, this is to say specifically that when they... 35 and can't find men it's not that they can't find men they find plenty of men but what it is is they have a poor choice selection yep po can't they, find a man they won't that motherfucker might not be your ideal guy but he might be great for you they cannot mm -hmm. see they cannot see short of their own fucking noses when they come to this point of fact it's it's yeah, absolutely what? horrendous yeah, women don't believe in settling, but they want to be men. And I'm like, you want to be men? Men have historically, since the beginning of the time, always exactly. settled. Exactly. Always settled. Like, come on, you don't take the road, go ahead and settle. Hang on, let's see what he got. Roll it. There are two things that have to happen in a functioning group or a functioning person. One, you have to repeat patterns and strategies that work. And two, you have to discover new patterns and strategies that are more effective and less time consuming than the old ones. Mm -hmm. So if the men's team wants to be effective, they need to do the daily chores, but they also need to be venturing out into the island to discover a new territory. Mm -hmm. They need to be trying new tricks. They need to be inventing new technologies. 
and mm-hmm. they need to learn how to scale their economy. Mm-hmm. This is where Sam, the useless daydreaming cameraman, comes in. Sam reportedly doesn't work hard unless he is really interested in the idea. That idea is a fishing net. The net was something they found amongst all the trash that washed up on shore. They found a lot of items that way. People saw the fishing net as a waste of time because it failed previously, but against everyone's wishes, Sam goes to work on the net in an attempt to catch more fish. He fails. Now released from wood duty, Sam sets off to check his nets. I'm pretty positive. Despite the group's hostility, Sam's convinced his nets will work. I refuse pessimism to seep in. Absolutely refuse Optimism it. Optimism it is then. Optimism it is. Ah! Nothing. Very predictable. It's a waste of energy, time, fuel, everything. Stop fanning around and start doing something worthwhile. Okay. Vic gets mad about Sam's failure and treats... Now think about this shit. If that was a woman that had an idea, because I know we got to relate this shit. We got to relate this shit back. If that was a woman that fucking had an idea and people told her, like, man, look, man, don't do that shit, bro. It ain't going to work. And then she goes out and does it. And it doesn't work. Who's she snapping on? Because I always notice that they be the ones snapping. Like, when it don't work, like, motherfuckers, motherfuckers are crit- more critical of men than they are of women. This guy, they even said the hostility was high. He wanted to do a fishing net. It failed already. Right. He's kept on sticking with it. He wanted right. to do it. Now, I bet money he going to catch some fucking fish. And see, I got a feeling he going to eventually. And see, that's the difference between men and women because women will listen to that, that group uh, conversation. But men will strive their own, mark their own way through it all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. I, I, I want to know if he caught some fucking fish, man. I think he might have caught pessimism some fish. to seep in. Absolutely refuse optimism. It. it is then. Optimism. It is. Nothing. Very predictable. It's a waste of energy, time, fuel, everything. Stop fanning around and start doing something worthwhile. Vic gets mad about Sam's failure and treats him even worse than before. This is a big deal because Vic is one of the most valuable members on the team, especially when it comes to collecting food. However, Sam refuses to fall in line and continues to work on the fishing net despite the failure, and that makes Vic even more mad. Vic? Yo! Do you trust me? I would never trust a stranger. Am I a stranger? Yeah, at first you were. Okay. It's taken me longer to get used to you than as any of the guys, because they sound a little bit like me. So unfortunately, I, I don't trust you. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Hey, look, we're going to just that one. Hey, read, go and read Philip comment because he said something. When a woman says, I don't need a man, she really means I can't find one and I will not settle. Because I shouldn't have to lower my standards. And the fucked up right? shit is, yeah, and, and, you know, the fucked up shit is, that's a hundred percent true. Because a lot of women say they don't want to settle, and if you ask a lot of these chicks nowadays, like, what's their ideal man, the mindset of ideal man? Like, describe your guy. Like, obviously, oh, he's a super nigga. He he's a certified super, super nigga. Super. Yeah, we covered that. But uh, like. <laughs> What's the best way to put it? Man, look, they just won't date down. They won't date down. Like, it, like the fucked up shit is that they can't wrap around in their mind is that we don't care about what you got. So when y'all go out here and do all these things about trying to get a degree and fucking like, in the fucked up shit is you fall in line to get a degree. You know what you got to do and you make sure you do it. You get a job, you know what you got to do. You make sure you do it. But when you get with a man, you don't want to do it. Like, the guy that's not going to, most guys are not going to put up with your bullshit, especially the guys that you claim you want, the ones that you want to shoot for, the the top 10, 20% of guys, they're not going to deal with your bullshit. They're not going to deal with it. So it's like, 
it, 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 it blows my mind. It's like, look, I, I'm doing all this because I think this is going to attract the guy. No, bitch. That's what you're attracted to. <laughs> that is not what men are attracted to. We don't give a fuck about your money. You know why? Because y'all have made it perfectly clear that we can't spend it. That's why right. Valentine's Day and your birthday are where, where men spend all this money. Every holiday that comes around, women women expect a man to buy them something. On Father's Day, motherfuckers get some socks and drawers. Like, they've been saying this shit for a years. A cologne, man. damn it. Yeah, some a, cologne, bro. Out, out of family watch. dollar. A goddamn shit that watch. I don't need. And you know when they're fucking off the Walmart bargain bin. <laughs> man. Let's see, I heard that. My standards be BS. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet you did, Philip. Like, bullshit, my standards. Like, what your standards is? Not having a nigga. That's your standard, bro. Your yeah, standard is that. not having a man. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go ahead and play it. I got a P2, so no job. You got it right now. Yeah, hold it, man. Vic is mad because he doesn't like politicians, and he says that Sam sounds like a politician rather than someone who is working class like he is. But there is one thing that's for certain, which is that creativity requires tons of trial and error and tons of failure. Right. Failure is a part of the process of learning new things. The problem is that in survival, failure has harsh consequences. However, eventually everyone gets desperate because there's no food, and they run to help Sam with the nets. If you catch something, right. fishing nets require more than one person to pull them out of the What's ocean. It? And well, right. this time, Sam succeeds. Oh, you finally caught some? You can't see something right now. So. Yes! No way. There's a lot of whipping coming. Hey, I will tell you this, though. Hey, look, 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 look. He a little hype for missing, missing on catching the fish for a long time. But I will say this. At least he did catch a fish. Not right. like... Somebody the earlier that, that fucking begged, yeah. begged another <laughs> man. Gonna <laughs> begged another man for a fucking fish. I was gonna say I ain't gonna say nothing about it. Please, sir. May I have a all right? Let, let's not. <laughs> that man actually caught a fucking fish. Yeah, like I'm gonna take it back a little bit, man. A bunch of fish like, here has this. harsh consequences. Yeah. However, eventually everyone gets desperate because there's no food, and they run to help Sam with the nets. If you catch something, fishing nets require more than one person to pull them out of the ocean. And well, this time, Sam succeeds. Yes! No way! There's a lot of whipping coming from that. Phyllis, Philip over here saying some real shit, bro. And the sad part is we do need to address this shit. I got a, uh, I've been, I've been trying to go away from uh, covering Kevin Samuel's videos, but I got one coming out for y'all tomorrow. And um, this lady is pretty much a size fourteen, y'all, five seven, weigh two hundred something fucking pounds. It says a man needs to meet her stamps. Wow. And the only reason that she's saying any of this is because we all know it. Dun dun dun. She makes over a hundred thousand dollars. Once again, <laughs> any lady that watched this shit, we don't give a fuck about your money or your degrees. The only way that we will start giving a fuck about it, and this is something that's gonna hurt y'all. It's gonna sting. Now be ready for it. Brace yourself. Y'all gonna have to give us access to that fucking money. Otherwise, we don't give a fuck. Because I bet money, if men did not spend any money on y'all ladies, did not give y'all money, did not buy y'all things, y'all wouldn't give a fuck what a dude made. Right. It's just like the same way they understand the concept when it comes to talking to another female. Oh, she do this. I don't give a fuck because they ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not benefiting from it. It's a selfish mindset. So, like, like real shit, Philip. Like, yeah, man, look, a lot of these women are in their late 40s, early 50s, now two, two, three kids and overweight. Yep. Like, bro, real shit. You know what? <laughs> yeah, hold up. You read that one. I'll leave you that one to you. to know where these women are at now? Just go to Facebook and look at the dating pages. Oh, my God. Right. Stay off Facebook. <laughs> the sipping is totally embarrassing. <laughs> but me and him was actually 
Me and uh, No Job was actually talking about the chicks that be on Facebook, bro. I be like, bro, all pictures be like this, like from the back. <laughs> they all be like this from the no. back. I'm like, oh, they be holding their stomach and shit. I'm like, what? Ew. Like, come on now. Ew. They need Bro. to like they need to put a fucking function in there. Like, don't don't say has kids. It needs to be a thing in there where you got to put how many kids you got. Right. Because most of y'all chicks got kids nowadays. I want to know how many. Yeah. I'm gonna do a segment of going through some of these dating profiles, y'all. Just going through dating profiles on there and just talk shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm be talking shit. Well, ladies, I'm not talking shit. I'm just critiquing. But for the guys, I'm talking shit. Yeah. But uh, here you go. Let's keep going. First dance, people. Woo! All I wanted was just a fish. One fish. How many fishes have we got? Twenty. Yeah! I'm talking about. Benny Big ooh, is the ooh. most successful fisher in the group <laughs> and has saved the day wow. many times when people were hungry. At best, I believe Vic caught six fish in one day. In this case, Sam caught 21 fish in one day while expending way less energy and time than Vic would have used catching that many fish. Here is Vic being a good sport about it, admitting he was wrong, and letting Sam know that he has earned... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about that. What what did Vic do? Vic admitted. This is a man. Think about this, y'all. This is a man. He was he was he was being an asshole because he was like it's a dumbass idea. We're not seeing any results from you doing. Even after the fact, this man finally caught something. What did Vic do? Let's see what Vic did. Let's see what fucking Vic did because I know ain't no <laughs> woman gonna do this. Let's see what Vic did. What did Vic do? Earned his respect. Sam's determination's been amazing with them nets. I'm really happy that you can see that. Yes, I couldn't. I won't deny it. I couldn't see it at all. I just thought, well, you're big city fanny. But uh, the big city fanny's done good. Sam Farmer, my heart comes off to you, sir. Well done, you, for having the balls and the determination to fix them every time. Because that certainly weren't my cup of tea at all. So Vic learned. Vic apologized and admitted that that man did something good. Who the fuck don't, man? Mm. Mm, let me read Smooth comment. Hey, yeah, Smooth. Yeah, it's going to be dating profiles, bro. I'm going to do some shit kind of like what O'Shea do, but I'm going to do it my own goddamn way. I'm going to go across these date profiles, and the fucked up shit is I'm going to have to fucking, I don't want to have to block out their names and shit and all that. I don't know if I need to do that. I see a lot of people doing that shit. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to cover some shit like that. I can just go through them, man, day for days. What you got, no job? It's going to be an exciting time. Can't wait to point those out. Man. <laughs> man. Hey, I want to say, man, uh, that's that's a a great skill uh, to be able to easily humble yourself and know when something's right to do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that situation where he caught 21 fish. The 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 guy that was like hard on him saying, Hey man, none of this shit works. Stop it. You're wasting time. Man, he had to swallow his pride and step up. Yeah, bro. And tell, look, and that, tell that man. Bro, and that's that's something like we don't care. Like, if I disagree with somebody on something or I argue a point, and that turns out it comes out that I'm wrong about it. I have no what? problem saying I'm sorry, I apologize, I was wrong. Right. That that is something that I have never seen a lot of females do, bro. Right. Like honestly, I've can't, seen can't females disagree. They can't yeah. disagree. Bro, I'm I'm not even gonna knock it. And uh yes, smooth uh yeah, I'm gonna block out that shit. And he said, You got damn right. There you go. You right, no job. I agree yeah. with him too. Bro, like we gotta we all gotta be adults and admit when we're wrong and we gotta be mean? like no. there, there's no like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the best man is a man that's able to understand that he was wrong about something. I think that some of the best people on the planet, because think about this. If you constantly keep doing something, and this is what I think is a big problem with a lot of the ladies, you consistently keep doing something that doesn't fucking work. That is fucking insanity. You keep saying, I want this type of guy, but you keep moving in this type of way. 
obviously this type of way that you're moving is not getting you what you want. And the it's path insane. That she's taking, the path that she's taking to currently uh, head her in the direction to get what she wants is going to end her up with all the things she complains about. A heartache, kids, uh, drama. That's exactly what's going to come out of that. Yeah. Like, it, it took me a long time, bro. I, I tell you, I don't know if I told y'all enough, but I tell, I'll tell y'all again. Man, I used to live on the goddamn street, and I had to figure out that, like, dude, I got to stop sitting over here complaining about everybody else is doing me wrong, all these issues and all these problems are not mine. Once I put that shit in my head, and I'm talking about this is after being in the military, going to war and all that wooden shit, traveling, still came back with a dumb mindset that it was everybody else's fucking fault. Once I got my head wrapped around, no, it's my fault and I can control my own goddamn life, shit changed. Shit changed real fucking fast. And I ain't saying it's easy because it, it's not. Every week that goes by, you you bitch about every goddamn thing, but you got to look at it on a grand scale of things, like a big picture type idea. Don't think about from day to day or week to week. Think about years. What I want, Where do I want to be next year? What do I want to right. be the year after that? Think in that right. type of mindset, because then you'll put your head fucking down and grind out. You'll deal with the bullshit in between because you're not going to go through life without dealing with bullshit. Right. Even the people that live their life the best, the nicest way, they're the kindest people, they're the generous, most generous people. Bullshit happens to them. So, like, dude, roll with the punches and do what you got to do. Let me see. Uh, Philip had one for us. A man <laughs> hey, has I'll no you problem know. apologizing to another man if he's wrong. Women? <laughs> Bruh, they cannot admit being wrong, man. They cannot admit being wrong, and I don't know what it is. I think it's a complex, but uh, let's keep on going, man. We got like two more minutes. Learns the value of creativity. And this is why, although often annoying and seemingly useless, creative people are needed. If you can afford creativity through excess resources or time, it can be one of the most valuable components of your group or your society. I think it also shows why, no matter who you are, you need some creativity in your life. You don't have to be a full-on inventor. But if you want a lot of success, you can't just play the same game every single day. Mm -hmm. You have to spend time learning new skills and discovering new ways to market those skills. Mm -hmm. You also have to work hard, be willing to take risks, and mm -hmm. accept that a ton of failure is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. If you don't do those things, don't complain about how everyone else is successful while you aren't. If your strategies don't work, you need to find new strategies. There's a second lesson in this episode that I think is valuable because a lot of people are looking for acceptance. If you watch the episode, you can see how Sam is on thin ice with most of the group, but then a few moments later, they are cheering his name. He got everyone to like him, and he did that by being useful. This is something that a lot of people are missing. If you want to have friends, if you want to have people like you, if you want to have people respect you, the primary way you earn that is by being productive and providing value to other people. If you don't provide value to anyone, people aren't going to like you. Well, maybe that's inaccurate. The only people who will like you are people who also don't provide any particular amount of value. Thanks. So you'll have friends who are worthless if you have friends at all. If you want to change that, you need to actually produce something. You need to be useful. And with that sentiment, I think this video has gone on long enough. And look, 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 y'all. What he said is really hard for me to even add anything else to it. But that's facts, man. That is 100% facts. You need to be useful. Men, I think a lot of us understand that we need to provide some type of anything to the world. We have to be beneficial to other people. The problem that we're having and the reason that we have these type of channels is that we need to let women know they need to understand it. And it's going to be hard, bro. It's going to be like trying to fucking hammer a nail in with a goddamn fucking plastic fork. But we're going to have to fucking do it because a lot of these women feel like all they need to do is show up. <laughs> and then talk the most shit. That was the biggest part of this video. 
We can do anything the men can do and prove that you can't. Right. Put y'all in the most natural fucking extreme environment. Like, honestly, they put them on a goddamn island, man. Like, honestly, if they would have traveled there and everything would have been catered, water brought to them, had a nice hotel and all that wood whoop shit, these women would have loved it. But I bet money. Go ahead. In the first <laughs> six days, there would have been stinking, 14 stinking dead bodies. In the first six days, they intervened. Hadn't they drugged the pig that they said wasn't really, was sleeping or, or tick infected? They would right. have, bro, come on now. Literally, first fucking three days, you were lost in the fucking forest for three days. You slept in there, you woke up in there, you got thirsty, you walked around and you still was lost. Then then on this on after sitting there by the fifth day, one of your group members drop out after it just finished raining. Come on, women. You gotta get you got you got you gotta you gotta let it come. Let it come back. You need us. It's a bro, it's a big issue. It's like this is this is one thing that gets me a lot, of women. I I don't think I've said this before on on the channel, but uh, we can acknowledge on this side what women do and what we value and what women do. But it's really hard to have somebody do something for you or really want to do something for you when they don't even acknowledge what you do. They just expect you to do it, like. Women always want praise and admiration for the things that they do. Right. But turn around and act like men don't need nothing. That's why I said that shit about Mother's Day and Father's Day. Women want all the praise. I, I Like, bro, I wait till Mother's Day comes around and we watch Facebook. I'm going to make sure I make a video off of that. Motherfuckers going to be writing all this shit. Look what I do for my family. Look what I do for my kids and all this woo -woo shit. And then when Father's Day come around, watch the same women give themselves praise. It's like we like in their minds and a lot of females' minds, men are just tools. They're just tools right. to be used, not to be admired, not to be accepted, not to be appreciated. And we got to change that narrative. And it's going to be real hard for us because we have the media and all this other bullshit around us. Telling women that they're so powerful and all this woot woot shit. Right. But once again, I refer back to that Ukraine shit. All the women and the children got to leave. Who had to sit in there and fight? The men. So how about putting exactly. a little bit of respect on our goddamn name? How about that? Put a little bit of respect on our name. Ain't nobody, ain't no man out here looking for y'all to praise us from Sunday to Sunday to goddamn Monday. But goddamn, put a little respect on our goddamn name. Because everything around y'all, everything around y'all, that's because of men, not because of fucking women. And when y'all can say that women were the reason that men did some of this shit, I will give y'all that. But at the end of the day, who the fuck did it? What you got? What you got on the job? I'm going to read smooth comments. Man, after that, what? Oh, man. Wait till you need your damn oil fixed. Shit, right. Wait till you get a flat tire. Wait till you <laughs> get a flat tire. Wait till you just need something replaced on the car. Hey, Smooth, I agree with you. Men are tools to other men, but the sad part is we don't dog each other out like that. And it ain't like we got a men code. It's not like a men, men line of silence. You know, they got that blue line of silence. Women actually have that shit over there. Men have no problem calling out other men on their bullshit. You said that, it. It was that, that hive mind mentality. Bro, bro that uh, dude. A community fucking, <laughs> uh, community fucking uh, voting system, you know? Yeah, we all going to do it together. Like, yeah, we can do it together, but somebody got to make the final fucking decision on this shit, man. And that's right. why, like, even that, like you referred to that last video that we covered yesterday. We don't make decisions together. 
We can bring right. ideas together, but at the end right. of the day, somebody has to make this goddamn decision. That's what when Philip said, there's not only one right. leader. There's not really one leader. Everybody brings their ideas in, and we all come to a conclusion about what it is, but it's only one person that's making that decision at the end. Right. Because the president doesn't call in all his generals, and they give a battle plan, and then we just go with every fucking battle plan. No, the president picks the final battle plan. He takes all of their goddamn advisement, and then he he figure, he picks which one he thinks is best for the country. And we well, like we gotta right. understand that that's how it goes, and that's how it should be in a relationship. It's not a dictatorship, but somebody has to lead this shit. <laughs> and they 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 conveniently trained or indoctrinate them to believe that dictatorship. Your man being a man is a dictatorship. Goddamn it. Bro, like even even my own sister, I was like, man, you like if you just change your attitude and like be nice, you can get married. And she said, why would I get married? I'm not gonna be no man's slave. That was when I decided I was gonna make a fucking channel. I'm like you really, and think about this: we grew up in a family, a Christian household. My father's a pastor. My granddad's a pastor. My great granddad's a pastor. Everybody grew up in a household where they had a husband and a wife. I grew up in the household where my dad was there and my mom was there. Never separated, always together. And I'm like, if that shit, this idea, this mindset can spread to a to a household of women where they grew up seeing a man doing what a man's supposed to do. Right. Yeah, my father had his faults, but at the end of the day, he provided for a family of fucking four and at one time five. And you still say that you're not going to be a slave? Okay, then. And if you look at them right now, while they out there in the world, both of my sisters, they out here in the world doing it by themselves. Section 8, government housing, hating their life, mad at the world every fucking day because they don't want to get in line with a man, but they'll get in line with the government, which is amazing to me. Right, and they say we t- we turned our backs on them. Let's see what Philip hey, had to say. Hey, cultural communism, that they just can't do it. If they did it, oh, uh, hold up, something's in the way, huh? They would still find something to complain about. You're hundred percent right because you like it's like we. I think I think I talked about this like maybe like a month or two ago. You can give, like, he gonna think about this. Like, Will Smith. Will Smith. He can give his wife everything in the world. All the money, any type of vacation you want to go on, you want to go buy this, you want to do, you want to move how you want to move. No regards, no restrictions. She can do that. But still, she'll sit on red table talking talk about his dick ain't shit. I'll still go and fuck another man in your house and put it on national television and let everybody know. It's always something to complain about. But how about being grateful? Because if he dropped her ass, it ain't going to be long before she run out of goddamn money because she's used to a certain type of lifestyle. Will Smith can easily go find another chick that can do exactly what Jada's doing, if not fucking better. And I would literally say better. Right. And be Gucci. It's not a lot of Will Smiths out here. There are plenty of Jada Pinkett's out here. I don't even want to give it the last name Smith. Like, that's why I like I know some when Fresh and Fit say that shit on their channel. And a high value man is hard to find, but a beautiful woman is 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 around every day. It's average. It's a true statement, regardless of whether you like the people or not. That statement is hundred percent true. You can't find, that's why they call it the top 10%. Because only 10% of the population can do this type of shit. But a pretty girl? they dime a dozen. They're everywhere. You can go to a goddamn third world country to find a pretty girl. But it's going to be hard to find a rich dude. A guy that goes out here and fights the world and makes something of himself where people respect him and want to holler at him. Ain't that right? It's like... This video right here, basically, y'all, was just to put shit in perspective to show that, like, all for, and I hope some women come over here and watch this shit because the guys, I think all of all of y'all that watch this, watch this channel, y'all know what it is. Y'all already know that, like, women and men are not equal. 
we want to have equal rights, even though women have more rights, but we're not fucking equal. There are things that men can do that are better than what women can do. There are things that men do that women can never fucking do. And then there are things that women are better at doing. And for all these women to hang their coats on, we can have kids and y'all can't. I always rebut that shit by like, you can't have a kid unless I put some nut inside of your ass. So, that's, <laughs> what you got, no job? We ended on your last comment. <laughs> Check this out. Appreciate all y'all for coming here tonight and uh, watching this with us. Uh, we made some good pointers. I know uh, uh, my guy here, A V J. Thing. Number one thing I gotta say is thanks for fucking support. Keep letting the channel grow. We love you. We appreciate you. Hit the like button. Check out the Facebook uh, Montego uh, watch for your financial and uh, uh, news. Uh, what's the other? Uh, reality Politics. with no dive. Damn it! Reality with no dive coming soon. Watch those shorts. All right, man. Look, man, I appreciate y'all and uh. As usual, regular regular schedule. I'm actually going to tune everything up, man. 11 o'clock, regular post. And then uh, 7 o'clock during the week. Might do a surprise fucking uh, live stream throughout the week. But if I do, it's only going to be on Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate all y'all, man. Y'all keep on supporting. I appreciate that shit. We really do appreciate that shit, man. And uh, share the videos with other folks so we can get more people in. And uh, we're going to catch y'all in the next one, man. So, as always, man, I'm going to leave y'all like I normally do. Hey, hey, no job. I need you to do it like me. I always say this shit to uh, We're going to leave y'all like right. I always do. And I'm going to leave y'all like this. Peace. Peace. All right, Peace. Y'all.